What's going on guys, CWG here, welcome to another episode of Nomi Factory. I mean, look at the size of this factory, it is big. At the end of the last episode, I left you guys a poll so you can vote for what we do this episode. And what did you guys vote for? Hmm, let's pull up the poll. And wow, it looks like you guys voted for the tier 6 micro miner, which is actually pretty smart because we're going to need this guy in order to get a lot of dragon eggs. Because if we look at the uses for the tier 6 micro miner, we could use it to get dragon eggs, we could use it to get Einsteinium, that's something we're going to need a lot of in the end game. And we could also use it to get a lot of Osmeridium. So if we need a ton of Osmeridium and some Uranite, Tier 6 Micro Miner is the way to go. Now we're also going to need Quantum Flux, which we have, Stabilized Plutonium, which we have, and Dragon Lair Data, which I already automated. Yep, we already have 2048 of this stuff. You can get it from Deep Mob Learning, easy peasy. And dragon eggs are going to be used to make stem cells, which are used to make the neuro CPU, which are used to make the red circuit. So it's all going to be used very soon. Now, in between episodes, I've been a little bit busy trying to play proactively, as they say. In order to get to these red circuits, we're going to need the neuro CPU, as you guys saw. Not only are we going to need stem cells, but we're going to need sterilized growth medium. And this stuff has to be made in the sterile clean room that we mentioned a few episodes ago. And this is quite the process. You need a fluid heat from raw growth media, which means you need all this stuff and mutagen. Mutagen is distilled from enriched bacterial sludge made from bacteria and uranium or small piles of dequadria for the best result. This is what we're using. You know what? Let me just show you guys. There's no point in showing you the entire thing in JI when I could just show you what I've been working on in between episodes. I present to you the sterile clean room. It's exactly the same as the normal clean room, but it uses a way more expensive filter casing. But I've already made it. Let us hop inside of here. Whoop. And we'll work from bottom to top. It's actually quite simple redstone. Right now, we're mixing mince meat and bone meal to make collagen. We're getting mince meat from fish. See? And we get fish from the fish farm. You got... Did you guys forget about the fish farm? We set it up in like, what, episode five or something? And it's over here. These basic LV fishers have been fishing for a long time. I mean, look at all the different fish we got. It's also giving us all kinds of like junk and name tags, leather, ink, and all these enchanted books. Look at all the enchanted books. I'm pretty sure I saw a soulbound book in here. We have like every enchanted book possible now. This may actually come in use later. Oh, there's an infinity book in here. We, I can finally put infinity on the boat. Oh, there it is. Soulbound 3. Items will remain after death. So if there's something we really don't want to lose, we could like enchant something with Soulbound. I think, I think I'm going to hold on to this book. Anyways, typical CWG getting distracted again. Uh, back in the sterile clean room. Okay, so we're making collagen. Now the collagen then goes into a mixer with water and phosphoric acid to make a gelatin mixture, which then gets centrifuged to give us the phosphorus back, so that gets recycled, as well as gelatin, which gets mixed with distilled water in an autoclave to make agar dust. And whenever you see like a rubber log in one of these machines, it's just to fill up the buffer slots because we don't need it filling up every slot. That's just kind of wasting resources. All right, so remember this agar dust. It'll be used later. Next up, we're getting a bio shaft from plant balls. We're getting plant balls from rubber wood in a centrifuge. The bio shaft is getting mixed with distilled water and water to make biomass and bacteria. Ew, yes, we're fermenting our own bacteria, which we combine them together to get bacterial sludge, which then gets brewed with the tiny piles of the quadria, and then it gets distilled, as you can see right here, and then that turns into mutagen. Okay, quite the process. The mutagen then gets mixed with the calcium, salt, mincemeat, and agar, combine it all together, and once this mutagen reaches 4,000 liters, which it looks like it's about too sweet, it will start mixing. Then once it's done, it will go inside the fluid heater, which is heating the growth medium into sterilized growth medium. Yeah, there you go. That's how you make it. Simple redstone. <laughs> and all of these machines are running at LUV ludicrous voltage power, which is being uh, powered from the back here. Working with these clean rooms is kind of fun because you're very cramped on space and you have to use your space very efficiently. It's all being powered by a 16 amp LUV battery buffer, which is being supplied from an energy converter on the other side. So that's pretty cool. Automatic growth medium, delicious. I also set up a couple new assembly lines here. This is gonna be for our passive assembly lines because there's some items 
we need a ton of, like these LUV motors and pumps. I imagine I'm gonna have to build several more of these. I think that's all the new stuff that I've done. Let's get into making this tier six micro miner. Our first task is to get Enderium double plates. And I think I've already automated that in the HV line. Let's go look. Oh, wow, look at that, Enderium double plates. Achievement get. And now we're ready to do it. We're ready to craft the tier six micro miner. Look at this. This is going to cost so much enderium. Uh, good thing I think we have a lot of enderium. Let me check the system. We got like 500 ingots. Is that going to be enough? Let us see. We'll start by making a pattern for this guy. This is an elite craft. So we have to take our elite craft packager unpackager things. Pop them in there. Press load. And it should be as simple as clicking this button and clicking save. Wow. Thank goodness we don't have to craft these by hands, because that would that would take forever. All right, so let's check our system. Do we have everything we need to craft these guys? Oh, we're missing pneumatic dynamos. What do we need pneumatic dynamos for? Oh, we need it for the resident thrusters. Okay, can we just like set up a recipe for this and it'd be good? Or is it going to be more complicated than that? Let's try it again. Tier 6 micro miner. We're missing diamond furni. What the heck? I thought we already automated diamond furni a long time ago. Let's check this crafter line. Oh, we automated gold furnaces, but we never automated diamond furni. Well, we could just use auto crafting for that. No big deal. All right, tier 6 micro miner, please. Can we make it? It says we have all the stuffs and things. Let's do it. Look at it go. Look at it craft. Okay, now it is crafting the... Micro engine cores and the reinforced mining lasers. That's exciting. Oh my gosh, it takes a hundred seconds to make this thing? I didn't even realize that. That's gonna take forever. We may have to use ludicrous voltage for this. What the heck? Well, while we're waiting for the craft, I guess we could make an LUV auto smelter. <laughs> Did I say auto smelter? I meant alloy smelter. That makes a lot more sense. All right, sweet. All right, let's move the crafting pattern into here and see how much longer this takes. 50 seconds? I guess that's respectable. I'd rather it be zero seconds. Hey, looks like we got it. Tier six micro miner. Woohoo. All right, we need to send it on some missions to get dragon eggs. Stat. All right, we got our mission ready to go. Micro miner, plutonium, quantum flux, a dragon layer data. Let's uh put this block back and it should go. Oh, it requires LUV power. I bet this guy, yeah, it's only running at IV. Well, we're going to have to do some power maintenance then. You know what? We're just going to run this thing at ZPM power for the memes. Let's go. It's running. 63 seconds and we get some tasty dragon eggs. There we go. Hey, we got half a stack of dragon eggs. Let's go. All we had to do was send a micro miner into the multiverse and we got some eggs. Woo! And of course, as I mentioned before, the reason we need these eggs is not... Oh, Celestial Manipulator? I think this is the guy that, like, can control time and the weather to make it stop raining. Uh, we need a bunch of, like, other stuff. Anyways, the real reason we want dragon eggs is so we can make stem cells. We just need some sterilized growth medium, which we already have, and some bacteria, which we already have. It requires LUV sterile clean room 300 seconds. Oh boy, we're gonna have to start this process now then. All right, I set up an LUV chemical reactor here with growth medium and bacteria. Only thing to do now is insert the dragon eggs. We'll use a robot arm for this so we don't get too much of it. Import the dragon eggs from the system, and there we go. We're making stem cells. Oh, I forgot to set it to keep exact, so it actually only keeps one in there. Uh, let's try that again. There we go, one dragon egg. Luckily, we do get two stacks of stem cells from this, so the 300 second process is hopefully gonna be worth it. I may have to set up another one of those processing arrays like we have in the clean room up there. We'll have to wait and see. Hey, look at that, we got some stem cells. Achievement get. Also, we get bacterial sludge as a byproduct. And that has to go back into this machine down here. How are we going to do that? You know, my friends, this is how Spipe Spaghetti starts. There's limited room to work in here, okay? Desperate times call for desperate measures. There we go. Problem fixed. And hey, now that we have stem cells, we are finally ready for the wet wear substrate quest. This is gonna cost LUV pumps. That's why I automated LUV pumps over here. See, I'm planning ahead. It's also gonna need multi-layer fiber reinforced circuit boards, which we've already automated. Petri dishes, which are made with PBI. Interesting. Some niobium titanium we already have done. Sterilized growth medium we have done. Circuits, we're good on that. 
and an IV sensor. Okay, we'll have to set that up in an assembly machine. And then after we get the wetware circuit board, we can make the final circuit board with more niobium titanium and iron three chloride. Okay. I think the path forward is pretty clear right now. So that means it's time lapse time. And we're back. Oh, circuits, 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 guys. So much circuits this past two episodes, but we're finally done most of the way. As you guys saw in the time lapse, we are making wetware circuit boards. We are making the master circuit boards over here. Already I got 256 of it. Over here, we're making the neuro CPUs with the stem cells and growth medium. And these are all ZPM machines, by the way. All of these are ZPM. The ZPM power is being provided by a LUV to ZPM step up transformer. Yeah, gotta love Greg Tech electricity mechanics. And yeah, right here, we're making the single step LUV circuits that we get two at a time. There actually is an even better recipe, but we don't get that till ultimate voltage circuit assemblers, which is the final tier of circuit assemblers. So that's why I meant by we're almost done with circuits. We have a little bit more to do in the future. But what else I did with some ZPM machines is I'm making some crystal SOC chips, which are being used to make the best IV circuits. Yeah, let's come take a look over here. We got two more ZPM circuit assemblers. One is making the most efficient IV circuits in a single step. Look, it only uses like eight bolts and eight wires, super cheap. And over here, we're making the super cheap EV circuits, which yes, this also requires ZPM. So we are making the most efficient recipe for every tier of circuit. Look, we got it for IV, we got it for EV. Over here, I think is a MV, down here is LV circuits. And if we come around here, this is where the HV circuits are being made. We have 2,048 of every tier of circuit except for our new ones because uh, I'm going to wait until we can make the most efficient recipe before we make like a kajillion of them. So yeah, let's go. We got essentially infinite ludicrous voltage circuits and ZPM circuits and we can request on AutoCraft the ultimate voltage circuits. Yeah. Now, you may be wondering, what about the final tier? If we look at our quest book here, there is one more tier of circuits, but we need tritanium in order to get those. If we look at the recipe here, it needs tritanium. And in order to get that, I'm pretty sure, yeah, MK2 fusion reactor with duranium, which also comes from a fusion reactor. So we're going to need two fusion reactors just to get this final tier of circuits. Oh, boy. And we're going to need the ultimate voltage superconductor wire. Yeah, we have a little bit to go, but once we get the highest tier, we can make the uh, super parallel control hatch to do 256 items at once. Ah, we're getting there, okay? So what you guys didn't see in the time lapse is I built a multi-block off camera. Just, just one multi-block. You guys ready to see it? I wonder what's in your mind, what you think this multi-block is. All right, dramatic turnaround. Da, 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 da. I present to you the Rotary Hearth Furnace, aka the Giga EBF. Look at this thing. This has to be the biggest multi block in Nobi Factory, right? Even if it's not the biggest, this thing looks sick. Essentially, it does the exact same thing as all these electric blast furnaces over here, which, by the way, we have, like, an illegal amount of. Oh, my goodness. Except for this guy could do a full stack at once. Not only that, but this guy is at ultimate voltage power. Yep, there are two ZPM energy hatches on here, bringing the power of this guy up to ultimate voltage. 
So to say this thing is fast is an understatement. Now you may be like, how the heck did you get all the materials to build this? But take a closer look at the materials. Tungsten steel pipe casings and engine intake casings and fireboxes? Wait, that's the same stuff we use for our extreme combustion engines over there. So we already had that automated, convenient. Nequada alloy frame boxes? We already have that automated for ZPM emitters, sensors, and field generators. Anyways, my point is, everything we needed to build this thing, we already had automated. I just had to put the pieces together, like this high temp smeltery casing is the same stuff we used for the alloy blast smelter over here. And it did cost a stack and a half of coils, and I chose to use Nequada. We do have access to the higher tier tritium coils, but I kind of don't want to waste all of our tritium right now. That, and if we look at the progression tab, there is one more tier of coils, and that's the tritanium. So I'm probably just going to wait till we can upgrade to the final tier for the ultimate flex. All right, you guys want to see this in action, don't you? Well, first, let me show you this awesome hatch I discovered. This is called the non upple Input Hatch. It's crafted with a tungsten steel and an IV machine casing, so it's not too bad. But this guy can hold nine different fluids in one singular hatch, which is convenient because the fluid interfaces can provide up to nine fluids. So it's like a match made in heaven. That way, we can keep circuit two inside of here and we'll have the most efficient recipe and it can use any of the fluids it needs to smelt the item. Over here is the input bus where we can put in the patterns where we can blast a stack of a time. I've only put in a couple recipes for now. This is definitely going to grow into the future. Let's see. How are we doing on titanium? Oh, we only have 3,000 titanium? <laughs> Let's request another 1,024 so we can see this guy in action. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the titanium recipe, it uses the titanium tetrachloride and magnesium. So you're going to see a bunch of magnesium get dumped into this input bus when we do this. All right, here we go. 1,000 titanium. Titanium request. It's it dumped in all the magnesium. It's consuming the titanium tetrachloride. Look at it go. It's beautiful. Look how fast it is. It's doing a stack over a stack per second. This is madness. Oh, let's go inside of it. Oh, this looks so cool. What the heck? This thing is absolutely awesome. Let's look at the crafting status. Look at how fast it's going. This thing is dope. Now let's go to our blast chiller over here because it's it's probably getting overwhelmed with hot ingots. Oh yeah. Look at all the hot titanium that's made its way over here. And these are two vacuum freezers, both running at ludicrous voltage. And oh my gosh, it's already done. It's already smelted 1,000 titanium ingots in that little amount of time. Not to mention, we'll eventually be able to upgrade this parallel control hatch to max tier once we get these ultimate voltage circuits. <laughs> This thing is awesome. It's definitely going to be in the thumbnail. Now, conveniently enough, there was a quest in the quest book for this, but it also wants us to build the bulk blast chiller. Yeah, there's a super multi-block version of the blast chiller that we were just looking at down there. And yes, this guy can also be parallelized with parallel control hatches. So this is going to be the next thing we're going to want to build. I love the Gregicality multi-blocks. They look so cool. And we're probably going to put the bulk chiller right over here inside of this chunk. Remember, it's important to keep your multi-blocks within the same chunk. Imagine if I did build this in the same chunk, that'd be a disaster. You know what? The more I'm looking into it, the more I realize we already have all the stuff we need for the bulk blast chiller on AutoCraft. So, like, should we make it right now? I mean, why not? That's what I'm saying. I already added a recipe for the bulk blast chiller. I think we have everything we need. Yeah, just some platinum foil, naquata pipes, gold cables, uranium rhodium, dinaquatide wire. <laughs> like, they're just making stuff up now, you know? All right, let's hit that start button. It'll take a little bit to craft. Oh, I even overclocked our assembly line over here, the one that we use for auto crafting to ZPM hatches. So this thing is running at ultimate voltage. Oh, yeah. Oh, and if you're wondering, like, how we have all this power to spare, uh, we have 15 plasma turbines now. Yeah, we're finally fully saturating our fusion reactor over here. In fact, it looks like it could go a little bit longer. And how we do it on tritium. Yeah, we got plenty of tritium, plenty of deuterium. So we don't have to worry about that. We're just running at 15 plasma turbines that are going into a 16 battery buffer with 16 ZPM orbs. And we're keeping up on power just fine, even with all these crazy UV machines running. And look at that. The bulk blast chiller is already done. Achievement? Achievement get well we get oh we get a full Nami dollar. Let's go. Although we still have to, you know, gather the rest of the materials, but luckily it tells you how much you need in here. We need 26 heat vents. Pretty sure we already automated heat vents. Yep. 
And yeah, we already have everything we need. Sweet. So let's get 26 heat vents. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be too hard to build. So time for a quick buildy buildy time lapse. And we did it, guys. We got a fully operational bulk blast chiller running at UV power, able to do 64 ingots at once. And you saw it flicker on right there. It's so fast, you can barely tell when it runs. But what's cool about it is these like these little vents light up. Oh, I love this thing. All right, let's uh let's place a load on it to see if it works. Uh, let's request like a thousand titanium. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there we go. The Giga EBF is running along with our blast chiller. It looks like our blast chiller is so fast, it, it can exceed the rate of this guy. Holy crap, look at it go. It has just smelted that titanium. In fact, oh yeah, look at our system. Look how quickly the titanium's going up. You'll love to see it. Now, this is like the exact same setup that we had over there. I tore the old one out and we have another one of those ore dictionary storage buses set to ingot hot. So it dumps all the hot ingots into here and they get immediately smelted, spat back out. We're using another non oopal input hatch so we can get liquid helium and cryothium. I don't know if there's other fluids we're gonna need. Oh, high octane gasoline. That's one of the ones that we need, I'm pretty sure. Let's, uh, I'll add that now before I forget. Sweet. That's used to cool, uh, yeah, draconium. See, I remember things. So yeah, I'm proud to say our days of waiting on these slow EBFs to cook are over. Now, the thing we're going to need next is a super mixer because the issue with ordering niobium titanium, right? As you can see, I've already ordered some, but it's waiting on the dust. That's because the dust is being made on demand with a ZPM mixer. Even with this guy running at ZPM, it still takes three seconds to make a couple dust, which sounds fast, but we need faster. So our next short-term goal is to make one of these multi-block mixers, which could be parallelized. Yeah, we're making all the multi-blocks. Ooh, this one looks pretty cool. We're gonna need some uh, alloys that I don't think we have automated yet. Yeah. But if we need any new materials, we can get them fast. Guys, I discovered something amazing I wish I knew about earlier. I automated some more components so that way we could make, check it out, ender fluid link covers. These are basically ender chests, but even better. And they're a cover, so you can slap them on machines. I'll show you where we're using them. You remember how earlier in the episode we had to use some pipe spaghetti in here? I've gotten rid of the pipe spaghetti. You can see that on these machines, let me switch to this mode, there's those little square blue dots. Those are those Ender Link covers. If I shift right click, it opens a little menu. You can set a frequency and it's, eight, it's an eight digit frequency. So there's even more combinations you can make than an actual Ender Tank. Like that's kind of ridiculous. So we got this Ender Tank cover, which is taking bacteria from this guy and putting it into the cover, which is F2. That is then being sent to this guy up here, which is also set to F2 and is putting the bacteria into the chemical reactor. And you remember when we make stem cells, it makes bacterial sludge that we were piping into that machine. Now we're using another ender fluid link on a different frequency to send the sludge back into this machine. Pretty cool. With these ender fluid link covers, you could get rid of a lot of pipe spaghetti. Like imagine if I use that in our polyethylene setup earlier in the game. Oh gosh, look at it. I still haven't torn out the old polyethylene setup. This is here as a memory for how we used to live. We have much higher standards now. Oh, you guys thought I'd forget the meme of the day, didn't you? Haha. <laughs> you never know when to expect the meme of the day. Today's meme comes from my moderator Watson on the Discord. Meme team, making the perfect meme. Slacking. That's right. Good job, Watson. You're the only one who submitted a meme. <laughs> I'm proud. Well, hey, we managed to do three of the four things inside of the poll this episode. Which means next episode, we're going to be getting into Draconic Evolution and blasting through the rest of this late game quests. The end is almost in sight. I'll catch you guys in the next one. CWG, out.